So you're looking for some companion plant ideas and either you're new to companion planting or you have heard the list before and you want something new. Well, you're in luck because today what we're going to go over is five unexpected companion plant ideas for your vegetable garden. So what are companion plants and why do we even care? Well, the reality is, is that we spend a lot of time, money and effort into making wonderful vegetable gardens and we would hate to lose them to plants and diseases. And not only that, we wanna get the most out of our vegetable gardens, right? We don't want just one tomato, we want lots of tomatoes. And that's really what companion planting is about. I mean, at its simplest terms, it's really just saying, let's have a polyculture, a mixture of plants, right? But some people take it and they want to organize it into these lovely little pairings, you know, like soulmates that were always meant to be. The tomato with the basil, the marigold with the eggplants, the carrot with the lettuce. And while some say that these have really good connections that can really increase your harvest and have lots of other benefits, some say this doesn't work at all. So at the end of the day, no matter what pairing or types of plants you're gonna get, it's really gonna do five different things. It's gonna bring in the good insects, you know, your bees, your butterflies, your moss to help pollinate the plants. It's gonna bring in those predatory insects like your wasps and your ladybugs. It's number three, gonna help bring in things like birds to help eat up the bad bugs that we don't wanna have. Number four is gonna give homes to all the bugs that we like. And number five, it's gonna help shelter the plants from the weather or the elements that may take them out. So I'm gonna cover five different plants that you should be considering for that vegetable garden. So our first companion plant is gonna hit that first thing that companion plants do. We wanna bring in the pollinators. We want the butterflies, we want the bees. And something that does a really good job at that is Biden's Alba. Here in Florida, Biden's Alba is the third most common source of nectar and pollen for our pollinators. And it's really critical in our state for the winter months because while a lot of plants are kind of going into the storing energy mode, this plant puts out lots and lots of flowers. So when you have something like your winter vegetable garden or even your early spring vegetable garden, this will be one of the few things that's actually flowering. And bees like it, butterflies like it, and it's edible. That's right, you can eat things like the flowers or the young leaves or even the older leaves can be put in things like stews. So it has a dual benefit. And similar to a lot of people's lists, they'll have things like marigolds because it's got a deep taproot system and it's about pulling nutrition up for the other plants. Well, Biden's Alba has that too. And because of that, a lot of people consider this a weed because they don't want it in their yard. Now, if you're one of those people, that's okay. You can do something like keeping it in a pot like I do so it doesn't spread everywhere and take over your vegetable garden, but you get a lot of the benefit of bringing in bees and butterflies to your vegetable garden. So for your first companion plant, think about Biden's Alba. So number two, when it comes to companion planting, well, we wanna think about how we bring in those predatory insects. You know, the ones that are gonna eat the bugs that we don't want in there, like aphids and mealy bugs and scale bugs. Well, a great plant for that is goldenrod. Goldenrod has a native range from Canada down to Florida, all the way over to Texas, and then up to the Midwest with the Great Lakes. There are a lot of different varieties, including from my home state, sweet goldenrod and seaside goldenrod. This plant can get from three to eight feet tall, depending on what type you get. And they're really cool because they are on these stalks and have these really, really pretty yellow flowers. And they happen to be the host plant to a wasp. Yes, a wasp. I know, you're thinking, I don't want to bring wasps in my yard. I mean, aren't those the things that usually people spray for? Well, this is not like a big yellow jacket. These are actually really small wasps, about that big, not very big at all. And they're really not interested in stinging you. What they're really interested in doing is putting their babies on here and then getting lots and lots of aphids because that's what they feed their babies and that's what they eat, which helps us and helps them. So we can help a predatory wasp. And what's also really great about this plant if you're into butterflies, is this is a major part of the monarch migration. They use these plants as pollen and nectar as they travel from the north to the south and then back again. So you can have predatory wasps, you can also help the monarchs, and you have a great companion plant for your vegetable garden. Our number three companion plant, well, we've got all these pollinators in the area, and now we wanna bring in some birds. And a plant that I recommend is firebush. 
Firebush has a native range all around the Gulf Coast and it has gorgeous coral flowers. It's also known as a great butterfly garden plant and will definitely bring in bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds too. But the birds really do enjoy the berries and they like hanging out in this giant shrub. And what's cool about it is you could use it as a centerpiece for your vegetable garden because you can train it up like a small tree. And what I also really like about this plant is oftentimes when we're in the vegetable garden, we get some little bug bites from noceums and mosquitoes. Well, you can crush up the leaves and rub them on your skin to take away that itch and that bit of burn. So for number three, consider firebush. Now when it comes to our fourth plant, well, you want the bees, like lots of bees. And maybe you're not really looking to bring in butterflies and moths. That might have some caterpillars that are eating your vegetables. So the number four companion plant is going to be bees balm. Spotted bees balm or dotted horse mint is a great plant for bringing lots of bees, but isn't as interesting for the butterflies. This plant is also can be used as an herb substitute for things like oregano or it can also have like a little bit of a minty flavor to it. So it has the benefit of being able to be used for teas or herbs and it's going to bring in lots of lots of bees. It has a white to pinkish purple color, which is really, really pretty and can be used on the perimeters of your vegetable garden. So when it comes to thinking about another companion plant, think about spotted bees balm. So when it comes to number five, let's talk a little bit about shelter. Now, not so much for plants, which some plants can be shelter for other plants down below, but I'm talking about more for the soil. See, one of the challenges in vegetable gardens is that you have like a lot of space between your new plants and even established plants like your beans going up a trellis, which means that you can have two problems. One, in places like here in the subtropics of Florida, is that we're going to lose a lot of water out of the soil and it can happen pretty quick, which means our plants are going to be really thirsty. And number two, well, the other thing is, is that when there's a lot of open space, then weeds can get in and start really competing. So we want to look for a ground cover that is low, not going to compete with our big vegetables and is going to be able to help keep that ground cool so that it can hold water. And a great plant for that is Sunshine Mimosa. This is a beloved ground cover in the state of Florida because it's also known as the powder puff plant. It has these cute little pink flowers that bees and butterflies love and they almost look like fiber optics coming out of the flower. And what's really cool about this plant is it's also known as a tickle me plant. And if the leaves get touched or moved too much by the wind, they'll fold up because that's how they survive the hurricanes in our state. So it's a great low ground cover that isn't going to compete with our new plants, but will help shelter the soil down below. So when looking for a ground cover to help your vegetable plants, think about Sunshine Mimosa. And a bonus idea when it comes to companion planting is to have a butterfly garden next to your vegetable garden. And if you want to learn about the four mistakes that you should avoid when starting a butterfly garden, go ahead and check out this. Or maybe you want to learn more about native plants, go ahead and check out this. And YouTube thinks you'll like this. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!